Hi guys, it's Will with Military Long Cuts here and in today's video we will be showing you the proper procedure to complete a lawn maintenance job. So this is a property that was just done by one of our team leaders and as you can see here on the ground uh, there's no grass clippings on the concrete and the edge lines are nice and straight and the uh, the grass is cut to the same length that he's weed whacking so if you come here if you look the weed whacker length is is the same height as the grass that's being cut so he's not leaving it too high to where they're stragglers and he's not cutting it down too low to where it's getting uh, or to where it's hurting the grass and this is what a proper lawn maintenance job should look like um, so if you look here, this is between two property lines, and that property line is, is completely straight. It's not on a diagonal, it's not on a curve. Uh, it's nice and straight to the post that divides the two properties. If you take a look over here at the sidewalk, everything is cleaned up. There's no leaves, there's no acorns. The edge lines are nice and straight, and everything is in an orderly fashion uh, so that the client can, can really... Uh, get the best value that that we can uh, through our services so I'm on a uh, client's property that we just picked up and this is our first time doing the lawn maintenance so our objective and our goal is to leave the property better than we arrived and always exceed the customers expectations so what does that include it's things like picking up trash uh, even taking back the garbage can after the garbage guys have came by, things like that to go above and beyond, to give them exceptional service. That's who we are, that's what we're about. Um, so for this client, um, anytime it's a first time for a new client, you always wanna walk the property, team leaders, especially for you guys, and take pictures of any damages on the property so that we can communicate that to the client and let them know that we didn't do that. So for example, some damage that's on the property, it looks like you know, something cracked the post and it looks like it's got a tire mark from the lawnmower, from the black treads. So um, stuff like this, we, don't, we wanna take a picture of. Also this fence right here, we went ahead and took a picture of it. And what we're doing is we're over communicating to the client saying, hey, we're on your property we saw these things and we just want to let you know and communicate that to you and that builds trust with them um, so that we can give them exceptional service you're always going to have to mow the front back and sides of the property that does include behind the ac unit so you want to make sure you don't forget about that uh, we also weed whack around any uh, landscape borders any trees along the fences things like that and then we also edge, so we use a stick edger to edge the drivewalk sideway and curbs and uh, alleyways as well, so don't forget about those if that property does have an alleyway. And then we always take the blower and blow off the front porch, the back porch, and all the hard surfaces around that property, including the street, sidewalk, um, and alleyway as well. We always start off doing weed whacking first, then mowing, then edging and then blowing. And the reason why we start off with the weed whacker is because when you have a client or a property that has tall grass or is overgrown, you wanna cut down those edges so that the mower can come through and mulch all of those clippings up to give it a nice clean appearance before you leave. Otherwise, if you go through and mow first and then weed whack, you'll have very long strands of grass that are sitting around the perimeter of the yard. Anytime you arrive at the property, um, especially a new one, you always want to check the cracks uh, in, in between the sidewalks and the street and things like that. Uh, we always cut those down to make it a, a neat appearance. Um, anytime you're, you come up to a corner, you always want to round your corner um, and we'll kind of demonstrate that in the video. Um, always weed whack where the mower can't reach. Um, if there's any ever a scenario where the ground is real wet, the weed whacker needs to make sure that they're cutting the same height as the mower um, in those wet areas so that the mower doesn't leave rut marks. Um, anytime you're mowing in a crew, 
the bigger piece of equipment always has the right of way. So if the other crew member has has the lawn ma uh, mower and they're coming, you got you want to make sure you get out of the way for them because uh, they do have the right of way. Um, and then this is one of the biggest ones is um, you don't want to full throttle the weed whacker on the fences because it will put a hole in it. It will damage the fence and ultimately you will be responsible for that damage. So we just want to make sure that we're real careful around those plastic vinyl fences um, as well as the wooden ones as well. But um, in a minute here we're going to show you kind of the demonstration of how to properly weed whack. job duty is actually mowing the lawn once you're done with weed whacking. So um, if you're on the lawn mower, you always want to make sure you're paying attention to what is in front of you because there's sprinkler heads, there are cables that are in the yard, hoses, you name it, it's in the yard. So you want to always make sure that you're not running over rocks and things like that um, that can damage the property. So when you get on the property, you always need to adjust the height to make sure that you're cutting off about a fourth to a third of an inch of grass. I mean, you're talking very minuscule, just about this much. We're just trimming it. We're here uh, regular to maintenance the yard, so you don't want to be cutting too much off of it. Unless it's overgrown, that's a different story. For all the jobs, you always want to make sure you're shutting the gates whenever you're walking in and out of the properties. Um, in a scenario that a dog does get out of the backyard, you don't want it to get loose uh, because that is ultimately your responsibility. So uh, if there are dog toys in the yard, make sure you move them, put them on the back porch. Um, we do not move trampolines. If there is a trampoline, just cut underneath it as much as you can. Uh, with the weed whacker, uh, the lawnmower, just do a ring around it, try to get as close as you can. But uh, we, do not, we do not move trampolines. Um, always overlap each stripe whenever you're mowing by one wheel length. And in a scenario that you have a bigger property with like a big backyard, you always want to do two to three perimeter, outside perimeter passes first before you start striping. And that'll give you the room to move around so you're not elbowing the, the fence every time. Uh, you always want to make sure with the mower that you're not bumping these white vinyl fences. It is crucial. If you do bump one, and you rub that wheel up against it, it will leave a mark and it is a pain to get off. You will have to get the magic eraser from the truck, get it wet, and really scrub that mark off. And it'll take two to three minutes of, of hard scrubbing to get it off. So just be careful. Stay off the fences about six to eight inches when you're mowing so you're not rubbing them and scratching them because the weed whacker is going to get there anyways. Also, mix up the patterns. So don't always mow the same way at week in and week out. Uh, when it's wet, the mower will leave ruts. Uh, so you don't wanna just keep cutting the same way every single week. Switch it up, go on a diagonal, go left to right, go front to back, um, and switch it up. 
And if there is standing water there, you never want to mow over it. Just communicate it with your other te uh, team leader, crew member, whoever you're with. Just say, hey, there's some standing water on the side of the house from the backyard. You're going to have to get that stuff with the weed whacker because that's the, that the marks will leave rut marks. is the edger using a stick edger on the driveway sidewalk curbs and alleyways so the best the best area to start would is always at the front right of the property and the reason for that is you can continually edge in a in a flowable motion to where you don't have to stop and start uh, in multiple different areas so if you can always start at the front right of the property for team leaders that are choosing where to park on the street, it's best efficient in the front right uh, side of the property. And we'll jump right into it and we'll show you kind of the flow of how to edge a property. things that I want to stop and point out uh, that Ryan our employee was uh, or our team leader was was doing so number one thing that he did extremely well is he went almost past or up to or even past the property line and that ensures that you're really edging that whole property to make sure that um, nothing gets left out the other thing um, if you take a take a look down here because this is a, the first time we're doing this property there's a good three inch overlay on this concrete which may happen sometimes so you might need to come back with the weed whacker and skim and skim this stuff off um, well as you can see I can almost pull it off because he, he did it extremely well um, but in some scenarios you might have to come with the weed whacker after you edge to clean that stuff up
job duty uh, as far as lawn maintenance goes is the cleanup, the blowing of the property. So um, we always start in the street and blow everything up onto the sidewalk. And then from the sidewalk, we blow everything up onto the yard. And we never want to blow it on the, on the uh, neighbor's house on either side. So you always want to angle it towards their property that you just cut to make sure it is uh, nice and clean and the neighbors aren't looking out the window and calling us saying that you guys put all the debris and the grass clippings on their property. Um, another thing to note is there are uh, sewer drains in these streets. You never want to pack all that stuff together and push that stuff down those drains. That is a no-go. Um, if a little bit of grass gets in there here and there, that's okay, but you never want to just bunch it all up and, and just push it all down. So it's almost like a snake motion. Um, I'll have our employee Ryan start here and he'll blow uh, everything out of the street and go down there and then he'll snake it back and then up on the front porch and the back porch um, as well. So So to close out, I do want to let you guys know about some of our policies that we have here at Military Lawn Cuts. If there's ever an open pet in the backyard, you do ne you never want to enter that backyard. You always want to walk around to the front, ring the doorbell, see if the, if the client is home so that they can let the pet inside. If you can't get the pet inside, then you need to contact the office and let us know so that we can communicate that to the client. The other thing, sometimes you'll have a client that'll come out to you and talk to you while you're on the, on the property. That's okay, turn your equipment off, go over there, shake his hand, um, talk to him, be courteous. You guys are who 
our company sees. So be the example uh, that we want to, to set. And um, just know that if that client is one to talk a lot, uh, you guys are on a time clock for that job, for each job that you're clocked into. So just make sure that um, either you, you stop the clock after about four to five minutes of talking uh, because we don't want to bill the client for that uh, time that's, that's not being productive. Uh, that's not right for us to do. But uh, just make sure either that or just to communicate to the client that you have a lot of work to do that day and you got a, a big route to do, so um, you got to kind of get going. But uh, other than that, um, if you have any questions, ask your team leaders, um, and good luck out there.